Hey guys, so check this out. This is a DD15 2009-2010. Pretty much the same setup on most of the years of the DD15. So this is the oil, this is underneath the uh, engine, okay? When you remove the oil pan, when you remove it, this is your oil suction module or the pickup tube. And those are the two tubes, okay, that have the seals. So when you start losing pressure, okay, a lot of times you're gonna get that check engine light. A lot of guys ignore it. They think if they rev it, oil pressure goes up, everything's fantastic, and there you go. However, here's the problem, okay? If you look at the tubes, if you can spin them freely, that means the O-ring inside here and back there, no good, okay? You have to drop this oil pan, you gotta fix the problem, or what'll happen is you seize the engine and then you're pretty much screwed, okay? So again, Hope that helps some of you guys understand what's going on. Again, if this spins, look at that shit. The other one is actually solid, so I'm not worrying about that one, but we're gonna replace everything anyway. I'm gonna replace the oil pickup tube or the suction module, as they call it. We're gonna remove all that. We're gonna put a new one, clean this shit all up, put it all back together, and hopefully get this down the road today. But anyway, just to give you an understanding of what's going on underneath, this is what causes the oil pressure issue or the drop. Check okay. this out. This is the oil suction module that we're gonna be installing on the DD15. Now there's two types, okay? One on the early, early years, 2009, 10, and I think 11's used this particular style here. Again, go off your VIN number to be sure. But this one is one of them that's, well, this is required for this particular truck. Okay, we're gonna be replacing all the seals on the tubes, okay? So you have two on the left, two on the right. Always replace those, and this is part of the problem where you lose your oil pressure, as you can see in the video, the amount of play that you have in there. And that's because, again, the O-rings harden up, they petrify, and they're no longer soft. Okay, so you got two on the left, two on the right. You have your oil suction module, oil pan gasket, always gonna put that new. This is optional, but this I recommend. On the oil pan, you have these bolts. I think there's 18 of them for the DD15. These little grommets, after a while, get hard, and they don't do their job as far as holding up pressure when it comes to your oil pan. So I recommend putting those new. All right, I'm gonna open up this box and show you what the new oil suction module looks like for this particular VIN. And again, this is a 2009-2010 uh, DD15 Freightliner. Yes, and and here is the suction module, okay? Check that shit out. It's over 300 bucks for that one. The other models are less expensive. I think they're almost about half price. Again, based on the VIN number. So I don't believe that they're interchangeable. But uh, check that shit out. Now some guys just go replacing the seals or the O-rings on the tubes. You know, if you're doing this yourself and you wanna cut corners, that's, that's up to you. You, know, you, you kinda take a, ch a chance, it's a gamble. This is the new one. So check that shit out. Let's take that out of here. There we go. So there is our new oil pickup tube or oil suction module comes with the o-ring on top okay that's where your tubes are going to go inside and that's pretty much all i can show you there because from here i have to put this thing back together and get it up underneath the truck now that video isn't going to be as exciting because it's going to be kind of hard to record and do all the labor so anyway i wanted to show you again that is the part number o-rings pickup tube of the oil pump suction module and the oil lines for a DD15. As you can see here, the manual's very simple, very straightforward. This is your suction module. You have your seals or your O-rings. And again, you've got two on each side. One, two, one, two. Now what typically goes out or will fail is gonna be the O-rings and the actual suction module. Okay, internally there's some components that will begin to fail. So you lose oil pressure you lose oil being maintained within the engine block and that essentially is what causes the failure or the catastrophic failure okay now what most people do is they just think oh i'll just replace these o-rings you can do that but again internally on the suction module you have a failure as well okay so i recommend to all my customers the o-rings two on the left two on the right brand new suction module okay now the oil pump itself is actually very good it's gear driven I've never had a failure on that particular accessory. Okay, so again, seals, module.
okay? Now, once you get it all together, it's, it's literally a simple R&R, &R, okay? You've got your four bolts in the front, you've got three bolts in the rear. Okay, guys, so check this out. We have the new oil module with O-rings. Okay, there's your oil pump back there. Now, it does have to be torqued, if I'm not mistaken. The rear is going to be at 22 foot-pounds. The front oil module or the pickup tube, whatever you want to call it, has four bolts. And this is, again, the older style. And I think this is at 44 foot-pounds. If you have the new style, it might have a plastic base. And I think that's at 22 foot-pounds. So if you take a look, everything is installed. Uh, if you install it with two people, it's a lot easier. One guy can handle the rear, center it, and then once that's done, you can work on the front. Okay, so I'm gonna torque this down. We're gonna get this all cleaned up and get the oil pan installed, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so once you've cleaned up your oil pan, get everything all nice and cleaned up, remove the old plugs. What you wanna do is go ahead and install new seals. Now this is typically what leaks. This is what you don't see. So it doesn't matter how tight you put the plug, you're still gonna get a leak. So once you put new seals, clean it up here. You can install your new piece on the back side. This is what goes on the inside. This is what holds it down together. Get it in, torque it down, and we'll go from there. Now once you have it installed, you're gonna to need to tighten it down. As you notice on this side, you've got two slots. Okay, you will need something to get it in there, get it across. This way you can tighten it down on one end and the drain plug on the other. You can install something like that. It makes it a lot easier when you're doing your oil changes in the future and you don't have to worry about essentially oil leaks. Go. Now we're just going to tighten. Now we're just going to tighten this one down. Put our new gasket, oil pan gasket on. Apply some Primatex, and I'll show you where to do that. And you're pretty much ready to go. Got both your seals installed on each side. Your driver side, which is the high side. Passenger side, low side. Right now is probably the best time to install this. This is part of your dipstick housing. It's got the seal. It doesn't look like there's any damage there, so we should be good to go. Just install it, you know, get it in there, tighten it down. And this makes it a lot easier. This way you're just introducing the housing, the clamp, and you're good to go. You're not struggling to do it while it's mounted to the engine block. So we'll get that tightened down. Again, install the oil pan gasket. I'll show you where to put some Permatex on the places that, to me, are the most important, which are usually up in the front and back on the corners. Okay, I'll show you where. Let's get this tightened down, get set up the front, and go ahead and do that on the rear. Now, you don't have to put that much. I mean, it really depends on you and what you like. Um, just go ahead and put that on there. It's gonna get in the corners. You can go back and clean it up later, but uh, that's pretty much it. We're gonna get this installed. And again, I can't really show that because kind of doing the work and recording are two difficult things. But anyway, you get the general idea. So we have the oil pan installed. Everything's been torqued down. One thing I wanna show you, it's, it's entirely up to you. Remove the front bumper if you're working on a Cascadia. It makes it a lot easier when you are removing your oil pan. You're gonna have a few accessories that are gonna be in your way. Hopefully they won't be, but if they are, there's a little look. You know, the higher, the higher off the ground you can get this, the better. So anyway, I wanted to show you that. We're gonna add the oil in, which is gonna be your 11 gallons. Plus, to, uh, I'm gonna show you how to prime the system. Okay, this is your oil module where your filter goes in. Right here on the side, as you can see right there, that's where you're gonna prime the oil. I'm gonna show you how to do that. You're gonna need about two gallons roughly that are gonna be inputted through there in addition to the 11. Okay guys, so what we're doing here is we are going to prime the oil system using the priming port there, okay? Now you do need a special tool so that you can do that. And what you're gonna do is prime the system with about two gallons of clean motor oil. Okay, that there is the port. Okay, you're gonna either use a manual pump or air pump. Again, it's not designed to be fast, just simply prime the system. 
Okay, so I hope that gives you some idea that's gonna pump everything into the engine and you should be good to go. What's going on everybody? Good morning. So today we are we started up the DD15. This is a 2009-2010. Replaced the oil module, the seals on the, the oil module, the seals on the tubes, and look at your oil pressure now. What a difference. When we first started it, before doing any work on it, you were at 50 psi and now we are just under 75. That's the way it needs to look on a cold start. Okay, obviously it's not warm. As it warms up, the oil will get thinner and the pressure will drop completely normal. What I like to show you guys is look at the difference when you first start it up in the mornings. That tells you, hey, oil pressure is kind of shitty. Be careful. So anyway, I hope this video helps. I'm going to try and put it all together. If you guys have any questions, as always, hit me up. Uh, this truck has 811,000 miles on it. Hopefully it'll have another, you know, quarter million, depending on the way this is taken care of. But anyway, I wanted to show you that. I'm excited. It's all done. Hope you have a good day. Thank you for watching.